Okay, I'm going to try and share my screen. First of all, if you allow me. Right. Please introduce yourself a little. Sorry? Pardon me? If you could introduce yourself a bit. Uh, I think I could do just that. I'm going to be talking about Jamboard uh, and as title says, it's a really relatively new tool. And my name is Marisa Constantinidis. This is a, a little bit younger, a younger and better version of me, which was created digitally. So this is a pretty idealized version, I would have you know. Thank you very much for coming. I run a teacher training center in Athens, Greece and online, mainly online um, these past few months due to the COVID situation. And we do run a lot, a lot of uh, uh, sessions uh, in Zoom. And uh, this um, inspired uh, this talk uh, because my trainees have a lot of problems with Zoom. And uh, so I started, I'll start with the problems. Of course, we can begin with our basic toolkit. We brief our trainees to have, you know, uh, a good display board to, uh, to be knowledgeable about creating text, editing, managing Zoom well, um, being somewhere uh, where they can keep their resources together. But you know, on one of their main tools is their display board. And I don't know if you have any problems with the Zoom whiteboard, but uh, would you like to uh, type any problems we have with Zoom at whiteboard if any of you do have problems? Or maybe I will be creating problems for you just because I'm doing this presentation with Jamboard. Type any problems we have, you have with, uh, Zoom whiteboards, anyone? This is teacher thinking, you know, allowing you some thinking time, but maybe nobody has problems with the Zoom whiteboard. No, no? Or is everyone answering a different question? Anyway, I'm going to move on. And uh, if you find something that resonates with you that, you know, you also have as a problem, I think, uh, you know, you can type something enthusiastic in the text chat. My trainees and I have found that Zoom, like other online, uh, online spaces, you know, I've, I've been using also Adobe Connect Pro for many years as Heike knows. I've used um, Big Blue Button, I've used um, WizIQ, which in fact has quite a good whiteboard, it's one of the best. But for Zoom, which is our most popular option just now, my trainees and I find that, you know, the controls on the whiteboard up there at Zoom, just to use it, are not intuitive. And there are too many controls. A lot of times they're not accessible from phones because the teacher may be working from a laptop and, and have access, but sometimes you want the learners to use the whiteboard as well. For personally, for me, I operate on Mac uh, machines, my laptop, my desktop. I very regularly lose my mouse when I'm trying the annotate function and I just get totally flabbergasted and, and disgusted with Zoom. For no good reason, it's just maybe a glitch with Macs. And also I find that if you get a lot of people writing on the same board, if you have people who don't have, um, on iPad, it's very difficult to use the whiteboard. So mm, that's also a problem. I see someone putting that in the text chat. If you have a lot of trainees, a lot of students uh, working on the same whiteboard, it tends to dry, drain the language. Would you, uh, is someone speaking to me, saying something meaningful? No. Okay. Um, so if you have a, a large class and everybody's trying to write on the board, sometimes things get stuck. And one of the last things that I found that's problematic 
is that you cannot actually copy paste directly onto the, the whiteboard. If you take a screenshot and you tell the learners to take screenshot, screenshots and share them, then they cannot paste them. We found some roundabout solutions. For example, we have, um, if you have a WhatsApp group or a Telegram group, you can get learners on phones to paste into that. And that's uh, very easily accessible. But uh, today I'm going to be talking about Jamboard as, as a way around all these problems. Uh, I found it very, very useful for, this, uh, for these particular issues. Um, my slides are not progressing for some reason. Ah, there we are. Okay, so I find it very useful, first of all, because there are fewer controls. And the, the basic uh, functions, you know, you can make shapes, you can make text boxes, you can have stickers, and also you can draw and highlight. And there's also a pointer. These are in, uh, in Zoom as well, but they're much more easy to access on a Jamboard and they're easier to use, they're more flexible. Um, moving elements on the Jamboard itself is quite easy. And also one of the things that I really love about it is that you can open a Jamboard and, and you can a jam or whatever they call it. And it works like a book, a little booklet. You can have multiple pages. You can add your whole lesson in. It's like, like having a PowerPoint online. And you can give each student a different page. You can give each group a different page. Groups can visit other groups. Uh, and they can sometimes meddle with their work. So we've asked, uh, we ask our own students to put their names up and keep out signs if they don't want other groups to interfere, which they love doing. But it seems to be much more easily handled by our learners themselves. Let me just negotiate my... Yeah, okay. So move and resize perhaps uh, is a function that you need to teach your learners because again, that's not intuitive. So what can you do with it? I'm going to show you some very quick ideas that I've used it for. I'm sure there are hundreds more. Um, I've just used uh, a few that I've, what I've found useful. One of the easy, easiest ways to start analyzing your learners' needs online is to do this. This is an example from one of our trainees, one of our teachers who did a, a first day analysis of a SWOT analysis, as you see, strengths, weaknesses in learning English, opportunities and threats when they started asking, you know, uh, working with one class and all the learners, each learner had their own uh, board. This particular board belonged to Hannah. Um, the, it was very easy for the teacher who created this to just copy this page and paste it on the next board and put another name on it. Um, you can brainstorm, you, know, you can get the learners to brainstorm ideas and words and anything else you like. So here is an example of uh, a, a little diagram that I copied and pasted on this, uh, on a jam board from a PowerPoint, which is also great because you have lovely slides on your PowerPoint. You can, um, paste them on a Jamboard multiple times. So you can have each group uh, generating ideas. This was something, an activity about surviving on the moon. So as a lead in, they had to brainstorm what they knew about the moon. And different people wrote by hand because you can see you can have pens, you can have stickers, you can have text. And then they went and compared their own boards with other people's. Here's another brainstorm activity. Um, Jamboard itself doesn't have shapes and uh, tables and stuff, but you can use the shapes uh, that are available to create little separation uh, sections or so one, uh, one column, another column, or you can even create whole tables as some of my trainees have created, like this one. Um, this one was created by a teacher by copying shapes and coloring them in. The shapes are the round shape that you, key, you can see here. 
and it just made lots of different shapes uh, for each team to be able to uh, put their own ideas in each column in their own particular uh, compartment, if you like. Uh, you can present uh, language and check language. Uh, Sarah uh, pasted her slide uh, onto um, a Jamboard and she got the learners to uh, predict how um, how they would be the, to reorder, to check. Uh, and, and this is just, it's not a, a Jamboard created slide, but it's a paste. Uh, something you can create either on your Microsoft Office um, service or or on a, a PowerPoint. Um, here you can get learners to check their understanding by saying, "Oh, these languages are these language items are more suitable for tentative disagreement. This is for strong disagreement. This is for." strong agreement and so on. So you can give them lots of language and they can decide where it goes by moving. Or another group here, an example with lots of stickers. Where they um, created, um, they decided which uh, expressions were formal, which were informal and uh, which were more uh, neutral. Everything you can do on your, um, you know, on a handout, you can do a little bit more interactively on Jamboard because the learners can complete answers with the stickers or with extra text that they can write or handwritten text. And also uh, you can get them to reorder stuff. For example, this is a, an image from a, a colleague of ours who used to be a trainee. I think that's uh, Katie, Katie Munch. And she made uh, some really nice jam boards where she gave examples. For example, you can drag uh, the words into for making sentences. So she wrote individual words that could be dragged around the board. Um, you can get the learners to practice orally or in writing. Thank you for annotating my slides. I, I would never be able to clear those, those little signs. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, here is some written practice that I saw. For example, uh, the teacher said, um, post your wishes and respond to the wishes of others. And one of the students said, I wish I could ballroom, ballroom dance. And another learner went and posted another posted. Oh, but if you could ballroom dance, it would take up a lot of your time or you could get injured on the dance floor. OK. Um, could I ask the naughty person? So um, it's, a, it's a good uh, place to have different kinds of practice. This particular one was a kind of written practice, but it's a practice that you can get people to visit and respond to. Uh, just one moment. You can also just grab, copy and paste little cue sheets. This is from a handout. But I love the fact that I can just screenshot that thing with my snipping tool and I can just throw it on the page and then I can make copies and, and different pairs can go online and in the breakout rooms and ask each other questions. This one is to practice used to, for example, or this one is for them to do a little project, a discussion about what kind of virtual practice they should choose for their class. You can do some individual uh, writing, also group writing, because the prompt can be repeated several times. So this is the same prompt where I asked some trainees to describe the process of writing in the classroom. And I gave them a pretty, pretty un, un, unartistic drawing that I did myself, I must confess. But I copied that on every three or four pages uh, I think and each person had to write an individual uh, text. Then they could visit each other's page and peer correct. So you can do peer correction, you can do peer evaluation. This is an example of using the highlighting tool, or maybe you can, uh, uh, the, the, the fellow student can create a little sticker with their correction. 
you can get the learners to organize, to reorder, to prioritize things because there's this move, uh, drag and move um, uh, element, which is really nice. Um, this one uh, was not actually drag and element, but I think uh, it's, it's a nice example of, you know, getting the learners to uh, look at some pictures, uh, tell a story, uh, put them in order and tell a story. This was in uh, in a lesson on listening where they had to um, recreate a story in a more kind of TBLT type of lesson where they had to uh, narrate what they think happened, report what happened in the main room and then listen to the actual narrative and compare with their own ideas. This one is uh, a similar idea. That was Katie Bunch's idea as well. I stole it from her Jamboard without any, but it's, it's free, it's out there, it's public. So uh, it's thanks to her that I got inspired and started doing this, where she's get, getting the learners to put the student of the story, the pictures in order, and then to drag uh, words and match them with the pictures to practice saying the words, thinking of the stress, and maybe then telling the story. Uh, categorizing and prioritizing can also turn into a very individual thing. This is a group of trainees. Um, it doesn't actually matter what they were doing, but you can see that the, the, the environment allows students to be quite creative and to organize in their own way. A couple of little extras that I thought were nice. If you're using um, Jamboard or an Android or an iOS device, uh, you have what is called assistive tools. So if you click on the pen uh, and you start drawing a little face, for example, the assistive tools try to guess what you're drawing and they present you with different drawings. So I tried to draw a cat and it came up with a better image of a cat than I could uh, devise. I tried drawing, um, writing the word hello, and in my uh, kind of uh, five-year-old type of handwriting, which I do, um, the assistive writing device fixed my writing and uh, produced, uh, you know, almost uh, print, uh, print quality writing. Uh, I couldn't share with that. You can get the learners to play board games. This is um, a pretty boring grammar exercise that I turned into a game a long time ago. And you can have the learners move around the board by putting their name on a sticker. Uh, you can find a dice um, place um, very easily online. Uh, just, just go on online dice and you will find something and I'll show you in a minute. And um, just uh, before I thank you all, I just want to show you a couple of extras. This is Twitter. This is the dice rolling thing. You can find other places like that. And also, um, I made a, a board where I stuck a lot of different stuff just to show you uh, what you can do. I don't know where. Yeah. Uh, I called this stuff I stick into jams. Um, for example, you can create a background that you uh, get from Google Images. And you can, if your, um, your theme is banks, for example, or banks, uh, I don't know, banking images, banking and finance is better, is what I want. You can get, uh, for example, a couple of images here or something, money, oh, there, yeah, this one. And you can set that as a frame and you can get the learners to brainstorm words or even you can uh, in, add an image from Google. It doesn't have to be the background. It, it can be cats, you want cats uh, for your lesson. So here's a cat that you want to insert as an image or you can have different cats and you can um, you know, enlarge and move the image around and you can change the background, make it white and you can get the learners to write words or whatever it is you want them to do. You can use uh, image prompts uh, and it's very easy to uh, copy uh, the material on one board is very easily copied uh, into another page 
and you can get people, people in pairs to ask and answer questions and then to add their own questions at the end. You can get uh, uh, games or board games that you can copy and paste or directly either from a Word document where I have created a lot of uh, boards that I've made or from an online game that you find you can just screenshot the board and put it in here. I showed you cue sheets earlier and pictures for a story. And also one, uh, <clears throat> I think this may be one of the last items. Uh, what I like to do very often is uh, to uh, uh, animate the course book a little bit. This is an image from the course book, which online, it looks very crowded, very, I don't want to use all this lots of writing on the page, which is very difficult on the eyes. And particularly if you've got people uh, attending your classes from tablets or smaller screen uh, laptops. And what you can do is you can just uh, take snippets of, you know, just snip items like, you know, you're going to do this, so all right. And you can go to your Jamboard and paste it and highlight it and make it big so everybody can see it. I think that was my last um, uh, idea here. This was supposed to be a very short presentation. So um, I'm gonna go back to my presentation. Thank you very much. And if you want to get in touch, um, I work uh, from uh, CELT Athens and you can email me or you can ask to connect with me on any of the social media. If you have any questions, I'd be very happy to answer them. So Jamboard is free, yes. Yeah, so you need a Google account. It's very easy to set up a Google account, yeah. an email, and then you get a Jamboard. It is free, definitely. Um, can I ask you to perhaps stay a little bit behind and answer the questions in text chat? that are there and there are quite a few. And so I'm thanking you very much for this presentation. So uh, what were the questions? Can we- A whole bowl of ideas. Do, do you mind answering the, the questions in text chat if you stay a little longer? Sure, uh, no, I just want- to be very kind. Trying to see them. We're running a little late. <laughs> um, Okay, I don't 